Hello friends, this video on sources of energy part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So these are some of the areas which we actually make use of solar cells. Right? But still even with solar energy or the usage of solar cells, its high initial cost which is involved has become a major drawback because of which solar, even though now solar cooker or solar water heater, even solar cells have become quite popular, but even then it could not become a, a big, I mean, it's because of some, I mean, it is like you have so many sources available to you. Some will have some advantages, some will have some other disadvantages. So everything will be used based upon their respective advantages and disadvantages. Similarly, for solar cells also, you have most of the things that are advantages. Just that the initial cost is very high. So that is its disadvantage. So again, everything will have a limitation of its own, right? Okay. So now let us talk about some other forms of energy, which are again, or non-conventional energy sources. And we will now talk about some of the energy which we obtained from the sea. There are many different kinds of energy which are harnessed from sea. The first one being a tidal energy, wave energy, ocean thermal energy. So these are some of the energies which are obtained from the sea. So we will discuss about each of these uh, in detail one by one. So we will start with tidal energy. So let us see what are tides. So tides are nothing but rise and fall of sea levels caused by the combined effects of the gravitational forces exerted by the moon, sun and rotation of earth. So that means when I talk of tides, I am talking about the level of the sea. For example, this is your sea level. I am just giving an example here. See, so this is your sea level when the level of the sea increases or decreases. So this level when either increases or it decreases because of the gravitational forces exerted by moon, sun and rotation of the earth. So because of this gravitational effect, when the sea level increases or decreases, we call it as tides. So when the sea level increases, we call it as a high tide. When the sea level decreases, we call it as a low tide. So now please do not confuse yourselves with waves and tides. Because whenever you go to uh, a sea beach, you see waves coming near you, right? So many of us think that those waves are nothing but tides. So many people think that waves and tides are synonymous. But that is not correct. When I talk of waves, I am talking about those waves of water which is coming near us, which we, which we can actually see in front of us. Those are waves. But when I am talking of tides, I am actually talking about the sea level. So the level of the sea, which we cannot visualize from, I mean, which we cannot actually visualize or feel. It is actually the sea level, the sea bed itself. So the sea level actually rise up or it fall down due to the gravitational forces. Now the question is, you might be wondering how come the sea level increases or decreases because of the gravitational forces of sun, moon and earth. So let us look at this scenario. Let us suppose this is the sun, this is the earth and this is the moon. Now what is earth? We all know that earth is nothing but, it is made up of 70% of it is water and nothing else. So if you can visualize earth as a small drop of water, because 70% of it is water. That means majority of it is water. So if you assume or if you visualize earth as a drop of water and if you look at it in this way. Now as the earth keeps rotating around the sun and as the moon keeps rotating about the earth, when the sun, moon and earth are lying along the same line and they are exerting some force on each other, then what happens? Let us suppose when sun attracts the earth towards itself, so this water droplet will get flattened towards this side, right? So this flattening is nothing but actually seen as a tide. That means there is a change in the sea level. Similarly, when the moon comes this side, the moon tries to attract the earth in this direction, whereas the sun tries to attract the earth in this direction, right? As a result, again, there is a flattening which is seen. So that is nothing but another tide. Right? So depending upon the position of the sun, moon and earth and also depending upon the rotation of the earth, 
what happens the level of the sea increases so we i know why i had drawn this diagram is because to show you that how the level of the sea actually increases because if you have a drop of water let us suppose if some something attracts the drop of water what will happen that spherical water will get flattened like let us suppose if you have this drop of water if something from this side is attracting it something is attracting it in this direction so the drop will become somewhat like this so this is what that means the sea level was here and now the sea level is here so there is a change in sea level right similarly due to the attraction now depending upon the position of the sun and the moon the sea level can either increase or the sea level can decrease right so this increase and decrease of sea level is known as a high tide and low tide so now let us again clearly look at the difference between tides and waves okay before that if you see here i have shown a picture of a bay how it looks like when it or uh, during a high tide and how it looks like during a low tide so during a high tide this bay is all filled with water because the water level itself has increased so that means the the water present in the bay is this much now during a low tide the water level itself has reduced so they if you see here in this bay there is no water at all so this is how the same bay looks like during a high tide and a low tide now let us look at the differences between the tides and waves as i mentioned tides are the rise and falls of sea levels caused by the combined effects of gravitational forces exerted by moon sun and rotation of earth now normally on each day two high tides and two low tides are usually experienced by the ocean so there are two high tides and two low tides which are usually experienced by the ocean so i mean when do you actually experience a high tide or a low tide actually depends upon the orientation or the position of the earth sun and moon with respect to each other and also depends upon their orientation with each other that is their rotation about the axis right so when will we have a high tide and when will we have a low tide will depend upon the relative positioning between sun moon and earth so since they all move periodically so the um, number of high tides and the number of low tides which we experience in a day is also almost remains the same that means on on one in, in a day we mostly experience two high tides and two low tides the tides are formed when sea level rises for a period spanning several hours it is not that the sea level increases for 5 minutes and then it went down and then if it is a high tide so the sea level will remain high for a long period of time and that period of time may go up to 4 to 5 hours similarly when it is a low tide the sea level decreases and that low tide will be there for again a period of several hours so this tides are i mean when you look at waves in the ocean it is like up and down up and down but when i talk of tides whether it is a high tide or it is a low tide it remains for a period spanning several hours now let us look at waves what is wave wave is nothing but a disturbance or oscillation that travels through space and matter accompanied by transfer of energy difficult to understand right now you can visualize wave i think you can understand wave more easily than tides because let us suppose you have a surface of water suppose you go near a pond the water is still it is not moving i mean you don't see it moving you throw a stone in that water what do you see waves get created i mean small waves we generally call them as ripples so ripples get created why were those ripples created or why were those waves created that's because that stone was a disturbance to that medium of water so whenever you have a disturbance that disturbance will give rise to waves and waves are nothing but periodic oscillations right so similarly in the, in oceans also you see waves so the rise and fall of water which you see when you, if you are standing on the shore you see the waves coming near you right so what causes those waves so the waves are caused by the winds blowing on the surface of the ocean so there are winds which are blowing on the surface of the ocean that act as a disturbance and these disturbances give rise to the waves so sometimes if the winds blow harder the waves will be more if the wind is very less less wind is blowing in that case the waves will also be lesser right so the intensity of the waves depends upon the wind blowing on the surface of the ocean now sometimes you would have also observed that on a full moon day 
what happens? The waves go very high, right? The waves go very high. So how do they go very high when waves have nothing to do with the gravitational pull of the moon? That's because when the gravitational pull increases, your sea level increases. That means it is a your tide increases, the sea level itself increases. So when your sea level increases, let us suppose right now the sea level is here. So your high wave and your waves are like this. Now let us suppose if the sea level itself increased and then you have the same waves, but when you stand here and you watch it, you are not able to see the sea level. You just see that in this case, the tides were till here, but now the tides are till here. I mean, the, I'm sorry. Now the waves are still here. So what do we see? We see that the waves are going high as when it is a full moon day. And the waves are going low when it is a, um, I mean, when there is no moon at all, right? So actually, waves are not dependent on the gravitational pull. Waves are dependent only on the winds blowing on the surface of the ocean. Whereas tides are dependent on the gravitational pull and tides are all about the level of the sea. So the sea rise and fall of the sea levels are tides and waves are nothing but the waves which we actually see. The small waves are also known as ripples, right? And they are caused by some disturbance in the water. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.